Coming up on TV2 News at 6, the shooter who killed two people yesterday in Ravenna is still at large. We have the latest details in the ongoing investigation. Plus, today is World AIDS Day. Hear how the Kent State community is helping to raise awareness. And Kent State President Beverly Warren sat down with student media today. She shared her thoughts about the attack on Ohio State's campus. And later, President-elect Donald Trump is starting his thank you tour today. Find out where he plans to stop to celebrate his victory. TV2 News starts right now. From the award-winning Kent State Student Media Newsroom, this is Portage County's TV2 News at 6. A suspect is still on the run after shooting two people yesterday in Ravenna. Good evening, Kent State and all of Portage County. I'm Ryan Dunn. And I'm Kyle Dawson. Police are still trying to find 25-year-old David Darnell Calhoun Jr. for the shooting deaths of two Ravenna residents. That's right, Kyle. TV2's Kylie Jarosinski is live in Ravenna to give us the latest details on yesterday's shooting. Kylie, what can you tell us? All right, thanks, Ryan and Kyle. I'm here in Ravenna where two people were shot yesterday by Akron resident David Darnell Calhoun Jr. Now yesterday when we first reported this incident, we told you that 33-year-old LaShawn Sanders was shot dead at the scene and a woman was taken to a hospital nearby with gunshot wounds. Now today we found out that Sarah Marsh, 32-year-old from Ravenna, was actually six to ten weeks pregnant and she died from her injuries last night. Now, Calhoun fled the scene after the shooting happened, which is why Ravenna High School went on lockdown. So today I talked to Superintendent Dennis uh, Han Hankala, excuse me, to figure out a little bit what happened during the lockdown yesterday. Ravenna High School students and faculty put their knowledge of drills into true action yesterday. Lockdown drills are practiced twice a year, but when Ravenna Area School District got word that shots were fired just one mile from the school, the administration took action. The high school releases students at 2.15 every day, so most students had already left the campus. But nearly 80 students were still inside and outside of the building when the lockdown went into effect. Once they got the word, you know, we were able to get everybody back into the school. They cleared the outside and they were in the building within a matter of a minute or two and into our uh, designated lo uh, lockdown area. So how do you prepare for a lockdown? Ravenna Superintendent Dennis Honkala says it really is just practice and communication. If our students are informed, if our teachers are informed, we've practiced it, we've rehearsed it, um, we feel comfortable that we were able to, to make that happen effectively. Ravenna High School was the only school in the area that went into lockdown because of the location, but Honkala assures the community that other schools in the district were not at risk. The reason that we did not lock down the other schools is because once the Porch County Sheriffs were on scene, which they were immediately, as well as the Ravenna Police, um, they secure the scene and they take over all operations and they direct us. So I was constantly in communication with them as to whether or not um, we needed to locked down other schools. We did end up holding the buses and then we have a notification system where I can contact all parents and um, guardians to let them know exactly what, what was going on. Thankfully nothing happened at Ravenna High School and the lockdown was lifted shortly after. But in situations like these, it is always better to be safe than sorry. Thank you, Kylie. At Kent State Today, University President Beverly Warren spoke to us on how she feels about the recent attack at OSU. She also spoke on how Kent State is prepared to handle these situations. We have one of the best alert systems uh, in all of higher education, so I felt, I felt uh, some comfort knowing that if that happened on our campus, uh, we would be able to respond in much the same way that was so laudable about how Ohio State responded. It, it, it's the biggest worry of my life mm -hmm. is to have something like that happen. President Warren said if an incident like OSU ever occurred on campus, the police force would immediately notify the senior VP of Kent, who would then notify her. Switching gears a little bit to weather, it was colder today. First day of December, that's why we're, you know, we're wearing our holiday colors know, today. I exactly. Uh, but I don't think we are going to be seeing a lot of uh, snow. We haven't seen a lot of snow, a lot of, not a lot of cold temperatures lately. I know, but I definitely had to wear my big puffy coat today. I was pretty Absolutely, upset. Yeah. <laughs> well, Kristen Renato joins us with our first look at our forecast. Thank you, Ryan and Kyle. You're right, we haven't seen a lot of snow recently. We had that good transition into the end of November into December. Yesterday being around the 50 degrees, I was in a light coat and it was sunny and I was warm walking to class. Today I had to break out my winter jacket and grab my gloves because I was absolutely freezing. It's a perfect time to start the holiday season, the 30 
30 degree weather transitioning for the first of December. Absolutely perfect weather and we're looking at that right now. Right now we're looking at 38 degrees. It's cloudy. We're going to be seeing a lot of clouds this week. So just keep that in mind when you're planning your outfits for this week. A lot of clouds, barely any sun. Again, 38 degrees. The winds are coming at an almost 13 miles an hour, so it's super windy. So I would definitely recommend breaking out that winter jacket, maybe throwing um, a scarf on, a sweater underneath because it's going to be cold. If we take a look at our surrounding temperatures near Kent, we're going to see a lot of the same thing. We're seeing the highest temperature is 42 today with everybody kind of falling below that upper 30s into um, lower thir into lower 40s. And if we take a look at our local temperatures, it's going to be the same way statewide too. Athens and Cincinnati, of course, being in the upper temperatures. But if you want to see more on that cold weather this week, tune in to my full forecast coming up. A township woman is facing felony charges tonight. Brittany Clement was arrested November 19th and charged with felonious assault and nine other charges. Clement allegedly led multiple deputies on a six mile chase, which she rammed a police cruiser multiple times. Clement eventually crashed the vehicle and fled the scene. She was arraigned back on November 21st with bond set at $10,000. And having sexual relations with animals is now a crime in Ohio. Members of the Ohio Senate voted 31 to 0 unanimously on Wednesday on Bill 195 if bestiality should become illegal. Surprisingly enough, Ohio now lowers the number to 10 states without any anti-bestiality laws. The bill expressly prohibits individuals from engaging in sexual conduct with animals and offenders will be required to undergo psychological counseling. And the Ohio Senate is looking to increase penalties for selling fentanyl. Fentanyl is a powerful opioid being added to heroin that is increasing overdoses, overdoses excuse me, across the state. Senate Bill 237 passed in the Senate and is on its way to the House for further consideration. The bill would increase criminal penalties and call for mandatory prison time. Those who oppose the bill say the prison, prison system is already over capacity. And it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. You probably didn't want to hear me sing that. The city of Kent is hosting its annual Festival of Lights this Saturday. The free event will take place from 5.30 to 8 p.m. on Water Street, with a special visit from Santa himself around 6 p.m. Horse-drawn wagon rides will also take place throughout downtown, starting and ending at the hometown bank plaza. health news today. Today is National AIDS Day. Our news correspondent Julia Hazel has a story on how Kent State is raising awareness. Hey Julia. Thanks Kyle. The HIV virus affects millions of people in the U.S. but why does it disproportionately impact the LGBTQ community as well as communities of other color? And teens in the U.S. have HIV and 50,000 people are newly infected each year. 90% of those are sexually transmitted and 70% of the 90% are from sexual relations with the same sex. So HIV stands for the human immunodeficiency virus. It is just a virus that attacks and invades uh, the immune system. So it works by kind of invading cells and then taking them over and slowly destroying the immune system over time, which opens people up to infections and all sorts. The human immunodeficiency virus, otherwise known as AIDS, has affected the LGBTQ community by how bi, gay, and trans individuals have sex. It's proportionally impacted by HIV, which is largely gained by sexual men um, or other men who have sex with men, especially men who have sex with men of color. Um, sorry, men of color who have sex with men. Um, and then just people of color in general, especially black women and black men. Half of all AIDS diagnoses are African Americans and one in every two black men that have sex with the same sex will get HIV. So why are the rates so high in certain communities? Bisexual men are more at risk for HIV, one because it's more concentrated in their community, so just because of who they know and who they have sex with, they're more likely to get it. They're also just more likely because of the way that uh, they use their bodies for pleasure. Right? Even though HIV is one of the nation's largest viruses, the HIV diagnosis rates have dropped 19% since 2005. 
Hearing this new information brings joy to the students who attended the event. I thought the event was awesome. I'm really glad it's raising awareness about this, especially on World AIDS Day. I think it's so important of an issue as we learn through the event. Spreading awareness of both the virus and the importance of safe sex was two of the primary resources why students attended the event. Like I also am very big on safe sex, especially within like communities like the LGBTQ community. So I thought this was very important for me to come to. If you want further information on HIV, go to ohioprep.org. Thank you, Julia. We also spoke with a health educator at Kent State. She gave her advice on what you should do if you think you may have HIV or AIDS. Our news correspondent, Aaliyah Keller, has more. How serious is this virus, Aaliyah? Very serious, Kyle. Today, one in eight people have contracted this disease, and they don't even know it. Statistics claim that December 1st concerns 1.2 million people just in the U.S. This epidemic is caused by HIV and may later become AIDS. I went to the health center on Kent campus and saw several pamphlets associated with AIDS and HIV. There I spoke with health educator Sierra Baker. She informed me that AIDS and HIV may be passed from blood to blood or from mother to fetus. Generally, most cases are caused from unprotected sex and sharing needles. Baker also gave her recommendations for those questioning if they have the virus. The CDC recommends everybody sexually active to get tested. Um, you know, you can't rely on the perception of monogamy to maybe like be your reason not to get tested. If you've ever had unprotected sex, you should be tested. Because you, you know, have the virus, it might not show up on the test. So one of the things that like our tester does, he talks to you about like your lifestyle and the risk behaviors that you're involved in because he might recommend that you come back in three months just to make sure that you know your negative test result today is truly a negative. Fortunately, HIV is no longer deadly, but still is a high concern. Along with Baker, let's take our time to support those who are and who did suffer from this virus. TV2 News, it's officially the holiday season, and that means decorations are going up everywhere. But what should you be aware of when decking the halls? But when we return, Donald Trump's thank you tour is making its way to Ohio. We have a preview of the president-elect's victory celebration. And for those of you who want a white Christmas, I can do you one better. A white first week of December. Stay tuned for my full forecast to see how much of that snow we'll actually get.